This is Recruitment Agency Ignition with With Andy Andy Whitehead. Whitehead. Helping you build your recruitment employment business fast. Fast, fast. Using digital and automation and one to many systems, tools, and inbound strategies. So guys, welcome to this week's Inner Circle Call. Metrics. So why is it somebody can go from, why is it someone who is a startup able to go from startup to 20K a month in a matter of a couple of months? Metrics. They're in control. They're in control. If you skip over this, you're not taking your business seriously. So I insist you shut down what you're watching. This is absolutely key. So the base campaign metrics. So first of all, if you don't do this, you will not make the progress you could have made. You will not make the progress you want to make. So you must get this, and it's simple. Next, whether you're a new firm, you're a startup, you're doing 10 million, these principles apply. The same principles we're about to go through apply. You cannot skip this. You cannot skip this. If you say this does not work, if you've got a metric, you will grow. So I don't care what size your firm is. I don't care how long you've been in recruitment. These are the fundamentals that you must apply. And these are the fundamentals, again, that have allowed members, some on the call now, grow rapidly. And what that means is hard cash in your pocket without being too crude. So if you don't do this, you want more money. Most people join us to make more money, number one, than to have the lifestyle or the business running in a way that they can actually enjoy life again. You're going to leave money on the table. This is on you. This is not on me. It's not on my team. This is on you. This is on you. I'll say that again. This is on you. You're in business to provide for your family, to create an entity, an asset that you sell, or it becomes a a cash making machine. If you're not in control of your metrics, if you're not in control of your VA, if you're not in control of your campaigns, you're not in control of your business. And this isn't, well, my VA is not coming back to me. No, you change it. You fix it. Or there's been a technical problem. You sort it. This is on you. This is your business. I can't stress that enough. There's one thing I just want to make clear. If you take accountability of this, your business will grow. And the worst thing that you'll happen, you'll come to us with a metric, proper metrics now, and a template if you're in the, say, first nine months, and we're going to improve it. But what I don't want to see is this doesn't work. And then I see you've sent out 200 leads in two months. You've not taken it seriously. And you're looking to blame when really the keys to your kingdom are right in front of you. So this is done with love. You must be on your metrics. And what drives your metrics are the team, the tactics, and you. So the principles. Number one, we're going to break your business into three core functions. Into three core functions. Nice and simple. Number two. Metrics is the magic. So, Ken, in London, we, um, I made a point of referencing Ken. For those who didn't come, Ken McCarthy. So, Ken joined us doing, I think, Ken, tell me if I'm wrong, I think it's about 30K a month. It's now currently about 100K a month. And we, we've got a very simple plan in place to get to 250 a month by August. So, next time we meet in London. So, good growth. Almost 10X. Metrics is the magic. Ken hasn't got some... Um, Genie in his pocket. It's a grip of what we're about to go through. And the fundamentals apply, again, if you're a startup or whether you're dealing with a multi-million pound business. Metrics is the magic. There's nothing that I'm I'm sharing with someone else. It's this. It's this. And we skip over it. Number three, master your weakness. And I'm going to be frank on this. So I am great at strategy. I'm great at starting projects. I am crap at following them through. So I need a team that supports my weaknesses. Now, what's your weaknesses? If you cannot manage a VA, how can that process be up and running? If you can't speak to clients, what's the point of getting 40 appointments with clients? What do we need to do to fix it? So you know what your weakness is, but what you cannot do is point the finger and say, this does not work when you know deep in your gut, this is on you. And I had a couple of conversations with members in London, by the way, you know who you are, and nothing but um, kudos to you. Andy, do you know what? I this, is, this was me. I was just looking to... You know, I didn't do this or I had this. So whatever your weakness is, be open about it. 
because it's, it's going to be there. And you might read your books on fix your weaknesses and do more of your strengths. I believe you, you focus on your genius, what you're good at, and then you have team to fix your weaknesses. Now, if you're a one-man business, you're going to have to get through some pain. But know what your weaknesses are and be clear with it. So if you get 15 appointments with clients and you close two out of 15, we've got a conversion problem, but we can fix it. If you clearly identify, I am shit at converting. Right, we've got a module for that. So understand what your weaknesses, is, weaknesses are and be transparent about that. There's no point coming to us and saying this does not work when clearly someone else has done the exact same thing and they smashed it. What has not happened in your process? Now, again, I'm being really direct with this because this is what I want you to get and for you to implement on a daily basis. We get together every four months, but I want to make sure on that Thursday evening you're at home, you're still doing these things. It's what we do daily. Next, when we built Double R, Double R many years ago, it was built on completely cold data. That means they didn't even know you, never heard of you. They weren't in your database. But the reality is your client now may not be hiring now, but they will be hiring probably in the next year. Same for candidates. So it's not a case of, oh, I've contacted them, everything's screwed. No, it's a case of you can run a campaign against your clients every month. And next week, we're going to go into um, sharing those templates. But your client will become a buyer or a hirer in the next 12 months. It might be next 18 months. It might be next six months. Same for candidates. Never lose sight of that. Next, you need to manage you, manage your VA, and manage your days. Simple, huh? Manage you. Again, what's your weaknesses? Manage your VAs. The amount of times I've heard over the years, my VA's not given me the metrics. My VA's not done this. My VA's, it is your team member. Your team member. So take an extra time to have the right member on board, train them, and also, my view is, your team will be with you for the next five years plus and you treat them as such. They're not just an entity on the other, other side of the world, they are your team. And you take the view, in five years, I wanna sell the business. In five years, I wanna be doing X. You want the same team, trust me. As long as they're good, if they're shit, you do the right thing. Um, Mike T, we had this conversation about transitioning from one VA company to another. But if you've got the right people, you manage them. And you manage your days. What you do daily becomes weekly. Again, not complex. But again, if I look at, we have Peter and Hazel stand up in London and 2.5x in the first six months. Great. What were they doing? It's a daily activity. So there's nothing here which is rocket science. However, what I am going to give you is the tools to control your metrics and the tools to make a decision on what do we do next. So if you don't do this today and next week, you're not going to make the progress you could. This is on you. You are the business owner. You are providing for your family. You are providing whatever it is that drives your, your heart. It could be your ego. It could be whatever. And by ego, I don't mean a, a narcissist approach. I mean, we all want to achieve something to say that we did it. We're here to support you, but you run your business and get that. Simplify the multiply. What we're going to go through today is simple. Next week, simple. So if we've given you a game plan, and the game plan consists of six points, seven points, and then you come and say, right, I'm running the, um, the meeting magnet session or I'm running the article. Why are you doing that? We've looked at your business. We've created an audit. We've looked at what you want to achieve. This is your plan. Stick to the plan. Now, if you want to go and bring another facet into it, it could be webinars, great. Chances are you're going to go off piece. So keep it simple. And again, what we do daily, our daily metric, our weekly metric, that drives everything. And again, you could be a startup, you could be doing 10 million. If I bring up my iPad, if we break down what we've got here, we've got break down what we've got here. Number one, we've got campaigns, which is what you're running, what all of you are running. We've got campaigns. Next, we've got conversions. We've got conversions, which we seem to miss half the time. And then we've got my favorite, which is continuation. So you've got 10 current clients or you've got 50 hot candidates. What are we doing to continue that relationship? What are we doing to automate that relationship? Now, what we're doing now is focusing on these two. Campaigns into conversions. 
campaigns into conversions. So under campaigns, what this means for you is double R, double R for all of you, LinkedIn for most of you. For some of you, it might be webinars. For some of you, it might be podcasts. But all of you have got these two, double R, double R on LinkedIn. Whether you're dealing with CEOs or whether you're dealing with admin staff, you're all running those campaigns. So this is our lead flow. The next step is conversions. So for some of you, conversions are going to be face to face. Some of you are going to be on the phone. Some of you is going to be sending out a proposal, but we've got conversions. So I want to know what your conversion metrics are. And this, as we say, conversions, but I want to know what your unit is, your unit of measure. And what that means is this, some of you on the call now, when you convert a client, you have to have a face to face. So you need to get, you might know now that for every client that you, every role you get, you've got to speak to three clients. So 15 face to face, you get five roles or three roles, whatever the number is going to be. Of course, then we want to improve that conversion. For some of you, it might be a simple telephone call. But I want to know what your lead flow metrics are and what your conversion metrics are. If we can get both of these controlled and scaled, then we get you getting paid quickly. The continuation, we're going to cover later. Now, in terms of who does this, who does this? At the minute, it might be you do this, stroke a VA. It might be you do all the conversions. You speak to all the clients. It might be you speak to all the candidates. The reality is... You might have an AVA or a commission annual recruiter doing the conversions. And you might say, well, only I can speak to the clients. Uh uh, no. What if you could 5x the leads coming in, but let's say that a commission annual recruiter was converting half of what you do. So 5x the leads coming in, but a commission annual recruiter or whatever the role might be, they can't convert as well as you. They can't do half as good. That means you've 2.5x the business. So we need to get this. Your business is step one. How do we scale the campaigns and how do we scale the conversions? And I want you to focus that, focus on that. So the key thing here is this, is control, is control. And what you should be able to do every single day is know the exact metrics in your business, the exact metrics in your business. So the leads and the conversion opportunities. So you know, if you want to do 50K a month, you know you need to get another 10 roles. To get 10 roles, you need to speak to 30, 30 clients. To get 30 clients, you need to put through 5,000 leads. Whatever your number is, we're going to re reverse engineer it. The same for candidates. Let's get this control. And then what we're going to create is a calculator, a simple calculator that essentially does this. So when we've got all your variables in, we're going to go through shortly, you can put a number in the front here or in, even the start at the back. So if I want to be doing 50K a month, that equals X amount of face-to-face -face appointments, X amount of leads, all the way through to what do we need to put in on a daily basis? Same for candidates. But to create that calculator, you must know what your process is to convert. So some of you will speak to clients. Some of you will have candidates book into your diary. Some of you won't know. But we can build this predictability. But you must get clear on what your control is. What your control is, i.e., what goes into that cycle? What goes into that cycle? So the first thing I want you to do, guys, is this. I want you to get clarity on what your unit of measure is. So from the client side, what can we measure each month? So double R, double R on LinkedIn is easy to measure. It's easy to measure. Now the next step is the conversion process. So I've had 50 appointments. Again, it could be diary bookings. What I want you to do is I want you to list now what your potential units of measure are. Now, for some of you in London, we did this. And I know that when we went through this, a lot of light bulbs went off. Hopefully you've got more clarity now. But now we're going to be following up, seeing your lead metrics and seeing your conversion metrics. If you control these two, you will grow. If you don't control these two, and you don't know what your lead metrics are, and you don't know what your conversion metrics are, you're going to struggle. You probably still grow, hopefully, but nowhere near where you should be. So the first thing I want you to do is this. I want you to think about your business and your process. So when I get a client, I do this. 
I get a lead, I speak to them, I send T and Cs. So in that case, what happens? Our unit of measure there might be one, number one, might be a one-to-one -one telephone chat. That's one metric we can measure. The second is we send T and Cs. Third might be T and C signed. Why is that important? Well, it could be that we have 50 one-to-ones and we get no T and C sent because the call's crap. Or it could be we've got 50 telephone conversations. We think they've gone well. We sent 40 T and Cs and we get zero back. But very quickly with those metrics, we can isolate the problem. So I want you to think about what is your conversion process? Don't make it more complex than it is. Don't make it simpler than it is. You might have two or three. So what is your unit of measure? How can we measure? So I've got 100 leads. Great. How many conversion? What happened? So I want to spend a couple of minutes. What's your client units of measure? And you're going to use these. So if you look at your team member, you say you've had 50 telephone conversations. We've sent out 40 TNCs. We've got zero back. What the hell is going on? What are you sending them? What's going on in that call? But we can isolate very quickly what the problem is, very quickly, and fix it. Or we can just say, we got 100 leads and I've got no clients. Where is the control there? So we spend a couple of minutes on the client side, and then also a couple of minutes on the candidate side. So a couple of minutes on the client side, and a couple of minutes on the candidate side. And for the candidate side, it may be getting CVs in. It may be book into your diary. It may be interviews. It could be these follow, it could be sequential, it could be these standalone. But what's your client? Units of measure. So we can say we've got 100 CVs in, we've got 50 in your diary, we thought they were a good quality, we had 30 go out for interview, and we placed none. Or we placed 25 out of 30. So again, what are the units of measure for the client side? Units of measure for the candidate side. These are easily controlled. In this instance, we had 100 CVs in and we sent out two for interview. Clearly, we've got a quality problem with the CVs. So we go back a step, back to the lead part of the process. Easy to fix. We've got control. But in your business, your unit of measure will be different from someone else's. And there's no right or wrong answer here. Now, it might be, when we look at your end-to-end -end process, it'd be a case of, hey, Steve, do you know what? We could simplify this a lot better. Why don't we just do this? So some of you, we've used um, automated processes to reject a candidate, but then nurture them, give them some good stuff to get referrals. But just focus on your business as it is now. What's your unit of measure or your steps for client side? And again, you might have, well, that might be one way. You might have another way. Some clients, you might do the one-to-one -one telephone. For senior clients, you might do a um, telephone. Then it might be a face-to-face. -face. Then it might be um, it might be lunch. Who knows what your process is? Then we've got TNCs, or whatever your process is. For some of you, we then send that. It could be up here with your telephone, then a proposal. That's a separate step. But what are your units of measure? So if Calm sends out 15 proposals and it gets nothing back, Let's see your proposal come. What's going on? So now 50 proposals, get 15 back. Yes, great. Somebody's working pretty well there. Next step, what's the constraint we need to fix next? So next, you've got your units of measure from client side, candidate side. If you're uncertain, start a thread in the Facebook group. Now here's some examples. Here's some examples. So client conversion metrics. You might have 100 requests for your CAS. You might have sent out 90. 10 you didn't because it's not a fit with the client. You might have got 25 diary appointments. You might have completed 20 of them. You might then send out 15 proposals. You might have got 10 TSC signed. You might have got one role per client, so 10, 10 roles. You might apply seven candidates. That might be worth 70K. Let's run the same campaign again next month. 100 requests for CAS. 95 this time, 28. Are the metrics linear all the way through? Completed 22. Proposal sent 17, TNC side, 16, openings, 16, it's linear. The metric's linear. How about if we just double the lead flow this month and not focus on anything else apart from double the lead flow? 
So that becomes 140k if we do it the next month. So with this control, we know exactly what we need to fix. And then what will happen is in your business, in my business, there are three components. Either it's the tactics, the strategy, but they will become predictable down to the 1%. It's going to be the team. The team are not running it properly, or it's going to be you, or you're part of the process, if you're part of that conversion process. So when we've got this control, it becomes easy to make a business decision, but it's easy to see what the problem is. Discover how to build your recruitment employment agency using one to many automation and inbound strategies before anyone else in your market specialization. Check out recruitmentmarketinginternational.com.